Ruth Chews the Witch's Buttons is a 19 chapter fantasy novel for third and fourth graders. Sandy has lost her button. On her quest to find her replacement, Sandy and her friend Janet discover a witch's house, a feuding witch and her brother, and some magic buttons. Their magical meanderings between Sandy's house, Janet's apartment, and the witch's house, as well as around Brooklyn, shows the age of the book. Readers may enjoy the heroine's freedom. Sandy and Janet, who do not have the restrictions of modern helicopter parents, are free to explore their town and its shops with just a note to their mothers. The parents are, in fact, blissfully ignorant of what their daughters are getting into. Janet is a latchkey kid with her own key to her apartment. The girls don't have cell phones or any of the other conveniences that modern readers would be familiar with, and they may notice that the book is dated. However, there is much to become engaged with, the story's magic and the disagreement between Witch Betsy and her brother Silas, and not mind that it's over 40 years old. Although widely read and popular, Ruth Chu never won any awards for her fiction. This is a good book for a child to read aloud to the mother or father. Girls may prefer it over boys as both protagonists are girls, but Ruth Chu's other witch books feature boys so don't count out the entire repertoire. It would be a good book to read individually and then have a Girl Scout Juniors meeting about it. Girls could make button bracelets and tell the others what magic powers each of their buttons have. One of the nice things about this book is that Ruth Chu wrote 29 books about magic and many of them are being republished by Random House starting in 2013. So if you like this book, you may like other Ruth Chu witch books, although they all do seem to follow a similar formula. Or the magical but similarly dated Time at the Top and All in Good Time by Edward Armorant. Or if you're looking for a more modern witch book, try the 2017 Newbery Medal winner The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill.